In the year 774 AD, an enormously powerful blast of matter and energy from space slammed into Earth. Nothing like it had been felt on this planet for over 10,000 years. A mix of high energy light and hugely accelerated subatomic particles. When this wave impacted Earth, it charged our atmospheric chemistry enough to be measured centuries later. Now our pre-electronic societies went entirely unaffected by it. But were this sort of event to happen today, the results would be extremely bad. The event was first discovered by an analysis of tree rings, of all things. Scientists found that the level of carbon-14, an isotope of carbon, was much higher in rings from that year than usual. Some years later, looking at air samples from ice cores, scientists saw that there were elevated levels of beryllium-10 and chlorine-36 as well. The common factor in all these elements is that they are created when extremely high energy subatomic particles hit Earth's air and ground. They slam into the nuclei of atoms and change them, creating isotopes. The only way to get particles at energies like this is from space, where powerful magnetic fields in exploding stars, for example, can accelerate the particles to such high speeds. We call these isotopes cosmogenic, made from space. And an explosion on the sun created intense magnetic field lines, tangling up and short-circuiting caused this event, the Charlemagne event, was caused by a solar storm. Now this giant solar flare is the largest flare that has happened since the Younger Dryas catastrophe. But there has been large flare events. For example, in 1989, the sun erupted in a powerful series of flares, as well as a huge coronal mass ejection, where billions of tons of hydrogen plasma was ejected at high speeds, carrying its own magnetic field this bout of space weather slammed into Earth's magnetic field, affecting it so profoundly that electric currents were induced in the Earth's surface. Called geomagnetically induced currents, this extra electricity energy blew out transformers in Quebec and caused a power outage that lasted for hours. Hours of powers. In February 1956, was the most powerful solar storm in the modern era, which was easily twice as strong as the 89 event. The power grid wasn't as heavily as used at that time, however, so it didn't cause the same sort of damage of the 89 event, but it was still a huge event. Now, using various methods to characterize the 1956 storm, including measurements and visible light radio waves and changes to the Earth's ionosphere, and more, they found that the 774 AD event was a staggering 30 to 70 times stronger than either of these events. This means it was likely 100 times stronger than the 89 event. It's not clear how long the flare lasted. Most strong ones grow and decay in a matter of hours, but the total energy released in this flare back in 774 was the same as what the entire sun radiates in one second, two times 10 to the 26 joules, or the equivalent of roughly 100 billion one megaton bombs going off at the same time. And that's a lot of energy, enough to power the entire planet for 300,000 years. A flare like this is called a super flare. And until now, it wasn't thought the sun could produce them. Scientists think the 774 flare may have been a special circumstance where a powerful flare occurred near a streamer of gas called a filament, slamming it and accelerating the protons together at high energies towards Earth. That, that fact that it's a rare event is something of a relief, except that we're now experiencing a new magnetic excursion. 
And such an event happening today would be beyond catastrophic. It would take out numerous satellites. The particles in high energy radiation can short out even hardened electronics on the surface. Would cause widespread blackouts, which could take months or years to fix. Since the bigger transformers used on grids cannot be mass produced and must be made custom. Some scientists calculate that passengers on international airplane flights could receive a full lifetime dose of radiation within just a few hours from such an event. The effects on Earth can be difficult to determine, but if it takes out the grid and we go back into the Stone Age, it's a mass casualty event. Now we know about the effects of geomagnetic storms and space weather on Earth, they form aurora borealis that we can see. In recent studies by Anthony Peratt at Los Alamos Labs on plasmas, high temperature plasmas, has made a connection between ancient petroglyphs and high temperature plasmas, which happen here near the aurora. These plasmas form many of the unexplained glyphs worldwide, including Jacob's Ladder which we can see just outside the door here to the west in Utah. And again. And then some of the anthromorphs that are unexplainable by the same plasma columns. Here, clearly these are the same anthromorphs. And are they the same as the Akkadians? The Sumerian gods? Enlil and Enki? Well, they look very similar. And could this all be due to space weather, to plasmas, to auroras, to super flares energizing the atmosphere and ancient man witnessing on the surface? Just like we see here, these huge streamers. If we intensify the electricity a hundred times, would we get squatter man dancing on the surface as seen worldwide in these glyphs from sea to shining sea did ancient cultures all see the same things and did they write them on the rocks as petroglyphs that we now see worldwide at one time unexplained but this evening quite concisely explained for your entertainment Hope you got something out of the video. Ancient man was trying to tell us something on the rocks. No, it wasn't children graffitiing during their time off, but worldwide a phenomenon seen in the night sky, dancing around, was cataloged for eons in the very rocks that had been sitting there for generations for all to see. And that's a boom to knowledge. We love each and every one of you. Share this with like-minded people. Be safe. There is more to be revealed.